Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I am back again with another really interesting coding interview question video today. Today we will solve question number 671, second minimum node in a binary tree. Before I start with the problem statement guys, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon for future notifications of more such programming and coding related videos. Let's get started with the problem statement now. So basically guys, uh, the problem statement is pretty uh, straightforward. We have given a binary tree here and uh, what we have to do is we have to find out the second minimum node in a binary tree and as you can see in this example there is a high possibility that the tree can have uh, nodes having the same value. We can even have a tree like this in which all the nodes have the same value. So in this case there is a minimum value 2 but there is no uh, second minimum value so that's why the output here is minus 1 whereas in this case the minimum node is 2 but the second minimum node is 5 so that's why the output is 5 okay constraints are that the number of nodes in the tree range from 1 to 25 the values range from 1 to 2 to the power 31 minus 1 and the root value is uh, minimum root left wall and root right well so for example in this case the root value will always be either greater than equal to the left well uh, and also it will be uh, less than equal to the right value okay so it's like a binary search tree it's just that the root value can be equal to the left or right node okay so now that the problem statement is clear to you guys let's jump into the solution part so to solve this problem guys we are going to use a depth first search and uh, in the depth first search we are going to traverse the tree and find the minimum and second minimum value okay. So uh, to find out the minimum and the second minimum value first of all I am going to declare two variables here. One is going to be min1. And I'm going to initialize it to a maximum value so that's later on it will store the minimum value inside it. So long dot max value. Why I have declared it as long because our solution is going to be an integer solution. And as we have seen in the constraints here that the value of node can be an integer max value. So if we want our long integer our uh, our min1 variable to contain integer dot max value we need to have long dot max value as its uh, original value okay now just like min1 i am going to declare another variable here which is called as min2 so now both the variables are declared to long dot max value now we are going to create our dfs function okay so private void dfs and in the dfs function we are going to traverse the node value of our tree so initially the tree is going to have node as the tree node variable name okay now we will simply check if node is equal equals to null so if the node which is passed inside the dfs is equal equals to null we will simply return from here but if the node is not equal to null then we have to compare the value of the node with the min1 so if node.val is less than the min1 then we are going to assign the original min1 value to min2 that's how min2 is eventually going to get the second minimum value and min1 definitely will get the minimum value node.val however there is a case when node.val is not less than min1 but node.val is lesser than the min2 and also node.val is not equals to the min1 value. So if node.val is not equals to min1 but it is lesser than min2 then also we will assign node.val to min2. Okay. After this we simply will uh, do the DFS for node.left and similarly for node dot right and once this whole recursion uh, recursion function gets completed min2 is going to have either the long max value or the second minimum value so let's call this function in our 
mean function dfs root now we will simply check if min2 is equal equals to long max value if min2 is equal equals to long max value it means that min2 was never uh, really assigned any value it means simply we have to return minus 1 otherwise if it is not equals to long dot max value then we are just going to return min2 as an answer uh, you can't really return min2 just like this because the return type is long so we are going to convert it into an integer let's run this code guys let's see if this works with our uh, example cases and it is working with one example case and hopefully it will work with other example cases as well and there you go talking about the time complexity so uh, let's uh, take a good look at the time complexity so we are using our dfs function first of all so because this dfs function is going to traverse all nodes of the tree but every node is only traversed once so that's why the time complexity is order of n where n is the number of nodes but if we talk about the space complexity, then on the surface, it looks like it's order of 1 because we are not using any extra space. But because we are using a recursive DFS function, which is getting called n times, which means every single time for every node, we have to say that the space complexity is also order of n. Okay. So in this case, both time and space complexity are order of n. So that was the solution guys. I hope the solution was clear to you and I hope your coding practice became a little bit better. If it has guys, then please do not forget to like this video and share this video with your friends. Please write down in the comment section below anything you want to say to me. Uh, if you have not yet subscribed, then please do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for future notifications. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care and bye bye.